Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual college visit series. My name is Mrs. Edwards. I'm the career counselor that supports both Atlee and Patrick Henry High Schools. We're really excited to have you here with us today. We are extremely excited to have Mr. Nate Crozier with us today from the University of Miami uh, and just really look forward to hearing everything that he has to share about the academic programs scholarships and anything else that you'd like to share with us, Mr. Crozier, um, as we kind of go on this tour with you for the University of Miami. So with that, I'll hand it right over to you. Thank you, Shannon. And thanks to those of you who either are taking the time out now or will take the time out to uh, go over the presentation I'm about to give. So I put together a quick uh, PowerPoint slideshow uh, so that you all can follow along as we discuss some high level points about our academic and campus community. Uh, before I begin, though, um, you know, I just want to say I've, I've overseen the admission office here at the University of Miami for just about four years now. Uh, but previously, I was the executive director of admission at the University of Richmond. So I know Central Virginia quite well. Um, I know uh, a little bit about the high schools which you all attend. And I'm super excited that you would be considering college in South Florida at the University of Miami. So I just wanted to start there, but um, figured I would begin this presentation talking uh, a little bit about some fast facts um, for our campus community. So we're a comparatively young institution, uh, not quite 100 years old, founded in 1925. We have 10,000 undergraduate students um, who hail from, uh, I believe, 47 or 48 states, the District of Columbia, and about 120 countries around the world. Um, we have 180 majors and programs. Um, we are a medium-sized institution. Uh, between 16 and 27 um, is our average class size, depending on your program of study. We have a very strong retention rate. 92% of our first year students return for their second year. And somewhat unusual for a school of our size, we do have a robust division one athletics program, which um, has uh, brought home 21 national championships. Although uh, I have to, uh, to make a quick comment, uh, the game last night versus UVA, which I did attend in person, Oh, what a bummer. What a, what a way to end that game. But um, looking forward to the rest of the season, no doubt. So um, uh, I wanted to kind of also just start also with the uh, fall 2021 first year admitted student demographics to give you a sense um, a little bit more about what our admitted student cohort looked like. Uh, so you'll see that the majority of our admitted students are actually from outside the state of Florida. Um, and 28% are from our home state of Florida. Uh, so you're in good company since you're, you're all located outside the state of Florida. Um, of those outside the state of Florida, 10% were international citizens. 55% of our admitted students speak more than one language, so um, a majority. And uh, the split between male, female, you'll see there 53, 47. Uh, and then in terms of race, ethnicity, um, I, I wanted to make sure that I show the breakout for everyone to see. Um, so in terms of value proposition, and this is something that um, I want to make sure that uh, I state explicitly, uh, we feel like we have one of the more compelling value propositions in higher education. And it's centered on this notion that nowhere can you find as much academic and social opportunity for the size of campus community we offer. So again, if you think back to a few minutes ago, um, I mentioned that uh, we have a, a campus community of around 10,000 undergraduates. The average class size you know, is between 16 and 27. So you get to know your faculty members well, you'll get to know your classmates well in addition. Uh, and that's important because as I mentioned also a few minutes ago, uh, they come from all over the world, you know, uh, outside the U.S., across the United States. Uh, furthermore, 52% uh, of our undergraduates self-identify as non-white, non-Caucasian. So racially, ethnically, it's also a very diverse campus. Many language being spoken uh, in classes, um, across campus, as part of our community. 
Uh, so again, it's a very diverse place in, in all forms. Um, and you can benefit and really learn from and hear from other students who come from all different walks of life, right? Um, so this, this value proposition based on opportunity, exposure, um, you know, for the size of campus community. Uh, again, we have 180 majors and programs. And if you span the list here of undergraduate schools and colleges, you'll find a lot of programs that you may expect to find um, at much larger public flagships. Um, programs like business, engineering, communication, nursing, um, architecture, even marine and atmospheric science. So no doubt you'll find something um, that you're interested in. Uh, and again, uh, for the size of campus community, medium size, but yet we have a division one athletics program um, that our students can take advantage of, you know, go catch a football game up at Hard Rock Stadium, you know, 80,000 fans, home, home of the NFL, Miami Dolphins, a great uh, place to catch um, a sporting event and support our um, Canes uh, athletic teams, right? Um, we also do have a graduate program in both medicine and law um, that students uh, at the graduate and pro professional level can take advantage of um, if you want to, um, to stay uh, affiliated with the University of Miami after you've earned your baccalaureate degree. Um, students, um, we're direct admit institutions. So, you know, if you put business on your application and you're admitted, You'll, you'll, um, you'll be admitted directly to the School of Business as an example. Um, you know, same thing for the other eight undergraduate schools and colleges. Um, all of our undergraduates though come in and um, will need to complete what we call the Cognates program. That's our general education requirement. And so uh, there's three separate Cognates, STEM, Arts and Humanities, and People and Society. Okay. And you would take three classes that are on a related area of study in each of the three cognates. So if we were to, to actually use an example to illustrate, uh, Sebastian, he's our mascot, our beloved mascot, the IBIS. Um, let's say that his major is aerospace engineering. Um, so it's obviously STEM related. Uh, any three classes Sebastian takes in his major of aerospace engineering will be used to count um, for those three classes that meet the STEM cognate, all right? And um, let's say he's interested in philosophy. He's a pretty philosophical type of guy. Uh, so he wants to take three philosophy-related classes. Those classes would be used to meet the arts and humanities cognate, and he's obviously pretty athletically inclined. Um, he's also interested in sports communication and kind of the melding of those two areas. So he takes three related classes on sports communication. Those three classes um, will meet the people in society cognate. So um, because of the fact that his major classes, those three classes in aerospace will count for the STEM cognate, he really only needs to take six classes uh, in two different areas to meet the two remaining cognates. Um, that really frees up his ability to navigate the curriculum, um, approach it very in a flexible manner. Furthermore, um, he would only need to add three additional philosophy classes for a total of six to earn a minor. Same thing with sports communication. So this is how our students navigate their curriculum. It's one of the reasons why a lot of our students will have a major in one or up to several minors. Um, and it's even how some of our students will pursue double majors at the university. So it's a great program. Uh, not surprisingly, we have a robust study abroad um, option for students who are interested in going overseas. We have uh, about 80 programs in 30 different countries across the globe. As you can see from the students submitted um, pictures, our programs span the gamut um, and are in many different countries on many different continents. I do want to point out we have um, eight University of Miami programs um, where we send cohorts of our undergraduate students to study. Um, and a couple of those locations, Athens, Prague, Buenos Aires, uh, Madrid, I forget the others, um, but the bottom line is, is that you can pursue a lot of different 
um, types of programs if you're interested. Typically, it's fall semester, junior year. You can take major coursework. You can take elective coursework, take it in that country's native language or in English. So there's a lot of options for you. Um, we also have um, immersion trips, um, short-term trips um, for you to take advantage of uh, as well. So we are um, we have residential colleges that are that our students can live in and take advantage of uh, as undergrads. Uh, we have a uh, we don't guarantee housing for students, but we have a, a living requirement for those who are non-local. So incoming students who are outside of Miami-Dade and Broward counties are required to live on campus. In the end, about ninety percent of our first-year students live on campus. Um, the other ten percent. Um, our local who self-select out of on-campus housing. Uh, about 50% of our second year students live on campus and the majority of our juniors and seniors, third and fourth year students will um, opt out of on-campus housing and move um, off campus to an apartment, townhome or house that they share with uh, friends. It's, it's an economical um, uh, choice that many of our upperclassmen end up making. Um, I, I definitely want to leave you with some information about uh, the research. Um, we are one of the nation's top research universities. We have 90 plus centers and labs. Um, we received um, approximately $350 million worth in sponsored research. The thing I want to point out is um, we have 10,000 undergraduates. We have about 6,000 or 7,000 graduate slash professional school students. So, you know, tons of research money. Um, uh, here at the university, and uh, most of our students are undergrads, right? And so our faculty members obviously do a lot of research and work with their graduate um, masters and PhD students, um, but there is opportunity for undergraduates to, to participate as well. Um, the picture here shows um, uh, members of the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science um, that uh, you know, do a lot of research in the kind of marine areas uh, throughout South Florida. So we have our own ship, runs research expeditions in Biscayne Bay, Caribbean, um, tagging sharks uh, in that school. Um, there's a scuba class that will, will um, help you, help prepare you to do research and take notes and, and document uh, underwater, uh, upside down as you're, as you're swimming the coral reef. Um, and, uh, and that school is home to the world's only category five hurricane simulator. Um, there's a lot of research being done, uh, you know, in terms of how uh, coral life as well as um, trees and various foliage can help dissipate wave energy as uh, hurricanes come ashore. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that school and program. Environmental science, uh, STEM, uh, we have, a simulation hospital right on campus for our nursing school students. Uh, we have a lot of labs and the research actually, uh, you know, bleeds into to non stem, uh, you know, non uh, science related areas as well. So you can pursue research opportunities if you're interested in, say, arts and humanity type program as well. Our campus uh, community is very diverse, as I've already talked a little bit about geographically, racially, ethnically. Um, diversity in all forms as well to include the types of organizations that students have started, the things that they want to get involved in when they come to UM. Um, uh, the one thing that a lot of our students are interested in is community service. And each year we um, kind of track that. And collectively, our undergraduates complete about 200,000 hours of community service each year. Uh, we have in total 300 plus organizations, you know, club sports, intramural sports, um, Greek life, uh, fraternities, sororities. Um, uh, you know, we have um, political organizations. If you want to be involved in bands, um, you know, again, it spans the gamut. And if uh, we don't have something that you want to you want to do, uh, you can start an organization. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, the one question I do get asked um, is about Greek life. Uh, about 30% of our undergrads are involved in Greek life, um, you know, slightly less than 30% of uh, men are involved in fraternities and slightly more than 30% are involved uh, of women are involved in sororities. Uh, we have an athletics program. I already mentioned division one, 18 varsity sports. 
um, 21 national championships, including five in uh, BCS football. Um, we play our home games, uh, as I mentioned, at Hard Rock Stadium, um, which is also home to the Miami Dolphins, um, site of Super Bowl 54. We shuttle our students from campus up to those games so that they can tailgate, participate, watch the, the Canes football team. Uh, we also have impressive athletic facilities here on campus. Uh, we have a swimming uh, and diving facility, have won national championships there, um, even had an Olympian team member uh, recently. We have the Watsco Center, which is where our uh, men's and women's basketball teams play, volleyball. Um, so again, uh, state-of-the-art facilities, even a baseball diamond where uh, we sell out routinely uh, home stands against, you know, rivals like University of Florida, Florida Atlantic University, Florida State. So um, our location in South Florida is um, very unique. It's a wonderful professional and cultural backdrop for our undergraduate students. You know, a couple of things to highlight here. Uh, Miami is home to uh, a thousand multinational corporations that have headquarters in uh, Miami-Dade. Okay, uh, we've been recently rated as the number one location for startup activity among the top 40 largest metro areas in the United States. Um, further from, from a cultural standpoint, 74% of our county residents speak more than one language, 54% were born outside the United States. Um, we truly uh, see ourselves as a city of the future. Um, so not just honing analytical skills in the classroom, but also uh, your language and communication skills um, as a, a resident of campus and the surrounding Miami-Dade area. <clears throat> uh, South Florida and uh, Miami is actually a, a, a really great place to explore the food scene, uh, the coffee scene in different neighborhoods. Uh, Miami is actually a pretty compact city, um, pretty, pretty small, maybe smaller than people realize. Uh, it has about 500,000 residents. Um, now, the the, you know, Miami, greater Miami metro area has uh, about five and a half million. So it's one of the larger metro areas. So you get that kind of exposure to opportunity um, broadly. But again, if you want to explore some of these neighborhoods, I put up there for you to, to visualize Brickell, um, super popular with our students, Coral Gables and the Miracle Mile, which is a matter of minutes from campus, um, even downtown. Uh, in Wynwood, which, which is a great place to, to take part in festivals, grab brunch. Um, so these are all anywhere from five to 20 minutes, uh, barring traffic. Uh, there's also an elevated train uh, that takes you from campus to a lot of these great locations for you to explore. And a couple other areas, Little Haiti, Little Havana, um, you know, are at your fingertips as well. The one thing I'll mention is coming from Central Virginia, you have a couple great options. Um, you can fly into either uh, Miami International Airport or Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Fort Lauderdale offers flights with Spirit and JetBlue Airways, um, and it's about a 45 minute drive um, via Uber um, or car rental um, from Fort Lauderdale's airport down to campus. Miami International Airport, super convenient. You fly in and you sit, uh, you fly in literally uh, 15 minutes directly north of campus. So it's a quick Uber ride right down Lejeune Avenue and you are on campus. Um, so it's uh, a wonderful um, option for our students. The uh, Topple Center uh, for Career um, Services is uh, a great way for you to build your resume, um, hone your interview skills, um, there's career fairs, um, obviously in the pandemic environment, a lot of that was happening virtually as well as interviews. Um, we have 150,000 alums living across the world. So networking is really important. Um, Canes Care for Canes, uh, graduates want to provide opportunities for internships, for jobs and placement to current undergrads so that um, a lot of them stay in touch and work directly with their career services. Um, some of our schools and colleges have their own kind of added layer of career services um, and, and opportunities. The business program is a good example. The music program is a good example. Uh, in the end, our graduates share a lot of success. Um, I think the placement rate for the 2020 uh, graduating class was, you know, 93, 94 percent. 
Um, and if you look at some specific programs, um, music, uh, marine and atmospheric science, uh, architecture, they had 100% placement um, with last year's graduating class. Uh, this was our uh, fall 2021 first year admitted student profile. We received just over 42,000 applications for admission. We accepted 28% of those first year applicants who applied. Um, the mid 50% range for both the SAT and the ACT is noted here. Uh, bear in mind that the mid 50% um, listed here are only for those who said yes to testing on their common application. This does not include anyone who uh, uh, applied and was admitted via our test optional route. Uh, we do recalculate all of our applicants' GPAs on an unweighted 4.0 scale. The average admitted student had a 3.8 unweighted GPA. And then uh, in the lower right-hand side of the chart, you can see the percentage um, of admits uh, that were uh, enrolled from the various admission plans. Uh, the takeaway here is that we enrolled about a third of our class from early decision, which is our binding admission plan. Um, so it's not 45, 50, 55 percent of the incoming class enrolled from these, these binding plans of ED1 and ED2. This means that if you either don't want to apply to a binding process at University of Miami, Miami or you aren't able to, it's totally fine. And as you'll see here, we actually enroll the majority of our class um, from the non-binding plans of early action and regular decision. So this is a checklist of what we require for admission. Uh, you'll need to complete your common application, which includes a su supplemental essay, submit a high school transcript, a school report from your college or school counselor, one letter of recommendation, and that should ideally be from either a school counselor or a teacher. You can submit more than one, but one is required to complete your file. And we are test optional again for spring 2022 and fall 2022. This means that you choose whether or not you um, want to have your test scores considered as part of the evaluation. Um, and again, about half of our current first year students um, applied test optional. And um, we have a lot of our uh, scholarship recipients uh, including Premier and even Stamp Scholars that um, had applied test optional in the application process. So this is the supplemental essay. I'm not going to uh, read it verbatim, but it's there for you to see. And I was sure to put some tips for writing your response to this essay prompt. Um, a couple quick things to just highlight. Uh, we're asking you to describe either an academic or a life challenge. It's totally up to you. Um, just share your story with us. Tell us in uh, the 250 words how you've overcome a challenge, and, and this is important, in relation to achieving a goal, right? Um, include concrete examples. That's always a helpful tip. Be mindful of the 250 word limit, and for that reason, I would recommend you just focus on one past experience, right? One academic or life challenge. And remember, this is just one aspect of the holistic review, right? So we're gonna pay particular attention to the grades you've earned, the courses you've taken within the context of your high school environment, your response to the common app essay prompt, as well as the supplemental essay prompt, the letter of recommendation that we require um, and looking at your extracurricular activities. So again, the supplemental essay, just one aspect of our holistic review. I already mentioned we're test optional for spring and fall 2022, no disadvantage or advantage, uh, you know, if you submit test scores or not for admission, scholarships, or financial aid, and uh, special programs do not need test scores either. Um, this is important. Uh, this past year, this uh, in, in fall 2021, uh, first time that we were able to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted students. And I put a definition of what demonstrated financial need is. That's the difference between the cost of attendance, how much it would, it would cost to attend the University of Miami, uh, and the amount of money a student's family is responsible for paying as determined by information submitted on the CSS profile and FAFSA. Award packages that you may receive would include um, merit scholarships and or need-based financial aid. 
And you can learn more um, on the website and I put the web link for you there. The financial aid checklist, pretty straightforward. The most important thing here is to remember to submit these documents by the corresponding deadline. And here are the deadlines for not only admission, but financial aid. So we have two deadlines um, for admission, November 1st, where you can apply binding early decision one or non-binding early action. In January one, you can do binding early decision two or non-binding regular decision. As you can see, the, the deadline for financial aid in both ED1 and EA is November 15, and for um, ED2 and regular decision, it's January 1. And I also put, for your convenience, the admission notification timeline for all of the admission plans. Bear in mind that if you want to be considered for our premier scholarships, which provide up to the cost of attendance funding, you need to apply by either binding ED1 or non-binding EA. Um, these are some of our special program deadlines. Um, so if you're interested in architecture, music, theater arts, BFA, or the health professions mentoring program, just uh, bear in mind that the supplemental materials need to be submitted along the following timelines as well. And I talked uh, a little bit mentioning the premier scholarships. These are the premier scholarships that you would be considered for um, if you applied under binding ED1 or non-binding EA, November 1st deadline. Um, you don't have to do anything um, you know, additional at the time of application submission to be considered for any of our merit scholarships. Uh, these premier scholarships, if you're named a semifinalist or a finalist, uh, we will notify you usually in the kind of mid to late December timeline and give you uh, uh, two or three weeks to submit uh, a response to an additional essay prompt. Uh, and then we consider that additional essay, essay prompt in, in making our selections uh, for finalists or recipients of these premier scholarship awards. We also have uh, presidential scholarships that go up to $28,000 per year and Kane Achievement Award. I believe the cap on those is up to 16,000. And, um, and those you never have to submit anything additional uh, to be considered and you're considered automatically for all of our merit scholarships um, again if you apply by november 1st and you're considered automatically for the presidential and can achievement um, only if you apply by the january 1 deadline mr crozier oh good yeah. perfect i was just gonna let you know we have another college visit that we're about to jump on as sure. well so i didn't want to cut you short but i just saw q a so that was good 